Hello, uh, and welcome to Desert Valleys Live. This is our city talk session. So, welcome back, Nick. Thanks for How's having me. How's the chair? Was it warm enough during the last break? Yeah, I feel like somebody warmed it up for me. Okay, got it. Good. So, City Talk is um, our second segment. We're going to run these back to back on Tuesdays. So, City Talk is if is our opportunity for Desert Valleys to bring you community information about the city, specifically um, about what actions the city's taken. We're going to bring in special guests from the county, from the water district, from all the different areas of the community. And it just so happens they have this this guy that's very conveniently in the same office that likes to talk about city stuff. So we moved it from the mayor page to Desert Valley's Live City Talk. This is one of the things that we talked about in terms of the last two weeks of transition. Right. And uh, and we were all playing around in here talking before we got started. So if we're smiling and laughing, this is because we, we we're, we're learning this technology as best we can. <laughs> right, yeah. Learning curve. It's a learning curve. But, uh, you know, it's it's fun because this goes back to the conversation you and me have had before, okay? What is the number one thing we discovered in that this last election cycle with all the political turmoil, with all the anger and, and, and just, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, politics was dividing families. Sure, yeah. Right? Absolutely. But there's one thing that wasn't happening, which is there's not this form of regular communication. Right. And so going back to that idea of what's being seen, the written word versus the video word. So Desert Valleys and Enron Media, we came up with this idea and we've agreed to sponsor it for the, the next year. So there's going to be 24 yep. city talk sessions. Um, I can tell you we've already invited or in the process of inviting Councilman Blades. Uh, we've invited uh, Supervisor Peters. We've invited, um, we'll invite City Manager Strand. We're going to invite other people to participate, not just Eric City sitting here talking about city stuff. Right. Yeah. Second episode, you get me. Okay. Deal with it. Um, but what the goal is, is to bring up what's happening in the community, what things are going on, and then try to relay this to the community so they have a greater knowledge of all the things that are going on in their in their city, and then some real transparency in what's going on. Right. You know, we get uh, I get so many people that give mixed messages about what's going on. Why is the council doing this? Why is somebody doing that? Why did this happen? Um, you know, this is my opportunity and the opportunity of of this show to bring that information to the community. Right. More so, open dialogue. More open dialogue, more transparency. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, hopefully another way for people to get information. Right. So Nick's going to host this again. We're going to do it like we did DV Live the first time. I promise you it, the format's going to get better and better as we keep changing. Um, I mentioned earlier that the reason for the video display was um, one of the things I've already asked. Um, here, so here's a topic a lot of people may, may not have heard, but we've hired a new public works director. Um, who will be coming in to replace Bard Lauer. Um, Travis Reed is coming over to us from the Water District. We're really excited to have him join us. But a perfect example is we can have Travis on. He can actually be able to show us, you know, what streets are lined up for the next series of repairs. Which streets have we identified that we know have significant damage and need repair? Um, this is not, you know, when is my street getting fixed? But 30,000 foot level. Let's right. get the information out to people. And um, so we're excited to be part of this. Awesome. I'm excited to have our media part of this, and we hope that we can transition this into something that the city does on, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, that'd be great. So, so to get started, how you been? I'm loving it. Um, yeah, it's funny. I, I, so many people were afraid. They're like, how are you going to balance four kids and the credit union and this and that? And, and, and I have had a great support system, okay? So let me be clear. I have an incredible wife who does an incredible job with four beautiful children, but they're all nine and under, and I, I thank my lucky stars for having her every day. Then I have a great staff. I've got an incredible team at Desert Valleys. I've got an incredible board behind me, and so they're being supportive and bringing me resources like Amanda, like this, in, in, in letting me explore those resources to do the best job I can, I can do. And then finally is... Um, 
I, I really have to give it up to our city staff. Um, I don't think people recognize how hard those people have worked with lean resources. Um, you know, the city the city took a big blow when we lost the redevelopment money in 2012, and, and it's been a constant state of appeal. But but city manager Strand has kept us in a balanced budget. We've built up a little reserve. Luckily, COVID has not had as devastating a fiscal impact as we feared. Sure. And we've got a lot of positive things that we can start to move forward on. Um, and that's been done with a lean, a lean staff. Um, and I think that's kind of an important thing to recognize is um, these staff people take a lot of shots sometimes in, in, um, in social media, in communications, in frustrations. And uh, they really are working very hard for, uh, for and on behalf of the citizens of this community. So um, probably getting to know them has been probably one of the most, most interesting things because a lot of people think I walked into the door there knowing every single staff person. I, I, knew, I knew three by association and one that had formerly worked for me. And that's it. Um, people think I have this like Rolodex of what every single person is and how I've manipulated it. I, I, I'm just learning them. And people like Narissa, who, um, if you're not aware, there's a quality of life meeting at 5.30 p.m. where we'll be discussing the pool further. Um, it, you know, stepped into the director role or the supervisor role for Parks and Rec. And I, I had a great conversation with her first time we sat down. I said, I just want to know what you're passionate about. I just want to know what you love. And she's, why? I said, because I want to know you. I said, how do I best, you know, engage what, your best skills and your best opportunities and what the city needs if I don't know what you love. Right. It's, it's, and I think that's something that's just been missing at uh, City Hall for a while. Enthusiasm, a little actually uh, getting to know the staff and actually getting to, getting good conversations going. Yeah. So, been loving that. I feel like uh, as a community, you get this, you know, government and it's got this veil over it. And then, you know, you get things that aren't going your way. Like, why don't we have a pool? Almost because those people behind the curtain are picking their noses too much, you know. Yeah. But uh, hopefully we can kind of uncover that. I think we're, we're going to slowly uncover it. And this, this is part of it. You know, honest conversation and conversation that, that, that is communicated with a mass in ways that they are not conventionally been communicated with, it's a very open and honest way to get um, information out. Right. Imagine if you could interview, like, the sitting president or something. You know, yeah. Every day and just well, really and then, ask questions. Then, then if you could interview the sitting president, you know, sitting back and having a conversation, not right worried about every single word. I, I that's one of the unique things that I I think I will bring as mayor over time is I'm not that afraid of what Truth. I say. <laughs> I'm more afraid of not serving my community in the best way possible than I am concerned about. Um, upsetting a single individual or, or a group of individuals by by speaking my mind. Sure. I think that's important. And thank you. So what really is Desert Valley's Live and City Talk gonna be and become? So like I said at the beginning, so so I, I should have we should have made this is a mental note for our agenda is to put what we're gonna say up front. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> so we don't ask the question. But the bottom line is I'm gonna get more people in here. We're not just not just gonna be air talk or anything else. We're going to get more people in here. We're going to get guests in here um, where I might be the one that's playing the host sure. against somebody else um, or especially bringing in other people to play off hosts. Um, these are going to be these are going to be citizens. These are going to be civic leaders. These are going to be um, even opinions that are that maybe aren't aren't common or happy. I mean, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of challenges the city has and, and the more that we do. Uh, building the bridges, the better we're going to be in the long run. Um, we've done a good job of of setting uh, divide in, and I am not trying to play the whole unity card or everything else. That's not what I'm trying to say. Sure. I'm simply saying that the, that on November 3rd, uh, communities across this nation were more divided uh, into fighting groups than we probably have seen before in American political history. And there's a desperate need for uh, common sense and 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 respect right to dominate uh, the future conversations so this live stream is going on social media do you have any other plans for it yeah we're gonna um, we're gonna put it on podcasts um, I'm big on want reading on, on reading 
big on listening to things in my ear when I do dishes or uh, hey, hey, here, you want to hear a funny story about how this started? You can tell that story yeah, real yeah, quick. Go ahead. So um, I was doing dishes, uh, what, maybe the last week of December, something like that. Yeah. Middle of December, something like that. Doing dishes at home. And I decided to put my earpiece in and I decided to audio record myself. And I called it Mayor Musings. And I sent it to Nick and I said, would this work as, as, a, as, as some form of communication? And we kind of went back and forth. And this is what it turned into. DB right. Live is, is, is 100% the brainchild of Mayor Musings when we decided, I said, I just want a way to talk to people. Not, you know, tell them that I'm right and they're wrong, but just talk. Right, and I enjoyed that. Um, I think it's difficult to stay on task, you know, if you don't have a written list of questions or somebody to kind of bounce stuff off of. It was about 45 minutes of So you kind of rambling, bounced around a lot, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it was, it was some great insights. Uh, I, think, I think I explained everything about, I can't remember what it was, but, I mean, I broke down everything about one issue. Yeah, like you go. Four or five way up here. <laughs> four or five different ways, because I was just rambling while I was doing dishes. You know, just ran, random talking, and, and that's what the impetus for this what DB Live City Talk is supposed to be. Right, and this is the Bring people revolution. in, have conversations. Yep, this is, this is the way to go for sure. Yeah. All right, so tomorrow you got a city council meeting? We do. What's on the agenda? Well, so we got uh, a fairly light agenda, but, you know, I fully expect that there's going to be some people who have, have a differing of opinion with one of my items. Um, so we have a, a second reading on the uh, accessory dwelling units, which are the, uh, these are like the mother-in-law units that are attached to single-family residence that can be used um, for rental property and, and are for rental income. And this uh, will clarify the city code in regards to it. So that's a fairly routine action, but it's a good action for um, making housing available in our community, which is one of the struggles we're, we're certainly uh, expecting to have over the next couple of years. Sure. Um, and that's, that's not just because of the number of homes, but also as the cost of it, housing changes, as cost changes. And then the, the more controversial one is uh, a recommendation. Um, so I attended, on behalf of the city, uh, a four-day virtual conference called the uh, New Mayors and Council Members uh, held by the uh, League of California Cities, or Cal Cities as they call themselves now. And it's broken up into these sections of training you know, on land use and on Brown Act and on what things can be said and what can't be said and how social media play into these things. And one of them is a, a session called Dysfunction Junction. That's the town of Dysfunction Junction. And they hold a council meeting for Dysfunction Junction. Okay. And what they did is they did the simulated council meeting for a two-hour council meeting. And what they were giving us was pro and pro tips and, and well, good and bad tips. So they were showing good and bad interactions on behalf of council members, mayors, public, um, presenters. What were the things that, that got it, that made the meeting out of control? Right. And what were the things that allowed for control to be maintained? A real good teaching opportunity. Um, and one of the things that came in that conversation was the idea that a public comment for items not on the agenda. Again, this is not changing public comment on agenda items in any way, shape, or form, but public comment on items not on the agenda um, were moved to the end of the meeting rather than the beginning of the meeting. And they gave me the analogy of, think of it like a restaurant. If, I, if two people walk into the restaurant, person A and person B, and person A has a reservation and person B does not, do you seat person A or person B first? Well, obviously, the answer is... Reservation. You see, seat the reservation. Well, that's what the city agenda is. The agenda has to be posted in public. It has to be released to the public a, a week in advance. We have to follow it in accordance with the Brown Act. It's the reservation for city business to be handled. Right. Well, so why would you put the people that don't have a reservation or the comments that aren't res reserved on that agenda ahead of all other business? Sure. And so it's a kind of a common sense approach to the idea of, Items that are not on the agenda in which there is to be public comment would occur after the business of the city has been concluded. Well, I think that's common sense, but also I, I feel like, you know, if, if your city council members are talking about city business that they're there to do, 
you want their minds to be fresh on that subject so they can do the best job that they can. Huge, huge example yeah. is, is that's what they, that was the example that was given is um, at a certain point, and, and I, I went back and I watched city councils for uh, Antioch. Um, the city of Antioch has got a, they've had a big stir in theirs. And so I went to look at other councils to see how that public comment affected the end of the meeting versus the beginning of the meeting. And I think at the end of the day, um, it makes good common sense for us to be at our freshest and our most focused on city business at the front of the meeting and then entertain, receive, hear public comment after that city business is completed. Now, again, that on top of that, there's so many other avenues for public comment. They can send emails into the city clerk. They can um, communicate with any one of us via email at any time. You know, flame me on Facebook. They can flame. <laughs> they can. <laughs> and they will. And, and that's okay. Because everyone has a right to their opinion and, right. and, and a right to public comment. Not in any way, shape, form saying they don't have a right to public comment. I'm simply saying that from a best practices perspective, it makes a lot more sense to handle the business of the city like it's a reservation on the agenda right. rather than dealing, letting every other topic be discussed or brought forth before this council before we handle the business of the city. And we've seen that. We saw it especially in 16. I went back and watched the meetings from 16 and, and, and looked at how the council uh, reacted post the casino arguments and all those meetings that went on, you know, for hours. Okay. I mean, some of those meetings were six, seven hours long. They, they ended at 1 a.m. in the morning. And, and a huge part of that is because there was literally two or three hours of public comment at the front of the meeting. Right. And how valuable is your mind? And how valuable is your mind at 10, 11, 12? It, it, it simply just makes a lot of, it makes a lot more common sense. It also aligns with the best practices of Cal cities. And at the end of the day, I'm not doing it to uh, curb public comment. I'm doing it so that we handle the business of the city in the priority of which it, occur it, it it's importance. Right. And honestly, I think you're giving more valuable or more value to the public comment because, you know, if you're listening to value, uh, public comment and you're sitting there thinking about what you have on the That's agenda, true. you're not fully listening. So very get true. rid of that, that um, stress and then, you know, allow yourself to fully listen. And, and one of the other things that uh, came up in the conversation and, and looking back over the history um, is the Brown Act as it relates to um, dialogue between council members and the public is we are only supposed to ask very minimal clarifying questions uh, in regards to any public comment. It's, it's very specific in the Brown Act about how that's supposed to happen. Well, by putting it just before the city manager's report, what that allows is if there is something that the city manager can address, then they're given the opportunity to. If there's public comment, item is not on the agenda again. If it's on the agenda, public comment will occur. Not on the agenda, it occurs at the end before the city manager, and it has an opportunity to be heard and potentially responded to. Right. Makes sense. And then, if nothing else, assigned to staff to get that response. So... Those are the two things. The rest is generally housekeeping stuff. Um, um, there'll be a, a, an announcement tomorrow, but that's not mine to make. Um, and uh, we're excited about it. I, like I said, I go into each one of these meetings kind of, kind of jazz because uh, not only having spent years watching them, but, you know, we get up there and we get to really, you know, positively affect the future course of this this. Uh, the city, and I, uh, that's where I commend my council members and, and, and the public that got involved in, you know, we got the pool pass last last one, and, you know, that grant is now pressing forward, and I, I guarantee you that staff is working with a confidence for the first time that, that is meaningful. That's awesome. It's good to hear. Yeah. Well, if you didn't know, there's a mayor boot camp, so there's that. There is a mayor boot camp. There's a mayor, mayor and council member boot camp. So me and uh, Solomon uh, Raj both attended. And it, it was great. I mean, you get to meet a lot of other people and faces and, and you know, get some network context. Really wish it had been in person, you know. Sure. Um, virtual is so hard to, to socialize. Right. In. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't, you, you, yeah, big old Zoom with, you know, 80 people on it. You're not socializing. You're, right. you're listening more than anything else. Well, next, uh, during the last meeting, both you and Councilman Blade stressed the idea of a revenue solution to the pool. Can you explain that a bit more? So 
what I want to do is I want to, again, reiterate that the pool action that was taken at the last meeting was to submit the grant. Right. Okay. Now, if that grant should come through, that's where the game changes a little bit. Right. We're on the hook for the... Uh, then we're on the hook. We, we've the gotten the money to build. Now we got to do it. Right. And the fact of the matter is that um, what me and Kyle both are saying, or Councilman Blades, apologize, um, is this is only the first stage. And this community has to be very clearly understanding of we are not going to be able to, in good conscience, approve and accept that grant without a revenue solution in process. Right, you have to be able to do the upkeep. And yeah, we have to be able to do the upkeep. And that revenue solution is going to have to have public support, public sentiment, and it's going to be an if if and thus you know, um, type conversation. And where does revenue come from? Revenue is taxes. Oh man, it's taxes, and I think. But so I, if you but want to pull, we got to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, nobody wants to hear that, and and right. nobody wants to talk. You know, I'll hear I'll hear you know fifteen comments. The parks assessment was voted down by seventy five percent of the population two years ago. Yes, it was. It was also not given um, any strategic marketing money by the council. It was also um, not promoted in a way that that the community understood. There's a lot of lessons that we learned from the parks assessments as far as sunsetting and how we how we make it available and, and oversight. And at the end of the day, I think we really need to look at L and V. Uh, it's, I, 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 I'm going to learn. Measure V is the one right now. L was before. Is why are those successful? Is because they have focused needs and they have citizen oversight. And those are two things that we are absolutely going to be talking about if we start having these conversations. And they're going to happen, and they're going to happen over the course of the next several months. And then this community is going to kind of be presented a plan of action. And, and you know what? Honestly, this is, where my, this is where I get smiling. This community is going to be put a choice in front of it. If it chooses to not want that course of action, then we should drop the conversation moving forward. Sure. This course of action says this community and everything that I am hearing and communications and social media and, and newspapers, we are desperate to see a pool return. Right. We want a pool, and at least the city can give them the opportunity to say yes or no. Right. And it's up to this, the, the actual citizens to, and, and, to do And that. a sales tax measure, if we end up going down that road versus a parks assessment measure, assesses more fairly across the entire community. It, it assesses against tourism. It assesses against city or county resident. It assesses in a more fair manner. Yeah. But it comes with certain challenges. And and I'm not going to sit here and say this is what we're defining right now, but I'm, I'm going to reiterate what me and Kyle both have said. We can't in good faith vote for a pool to pat, no matter how much we want it if there's not a revenue solution that this community is supporting. Right. Got to be able to take care of it. This is not, we can't cut expenses to make this happen. This is a, this is a revenue de de demanded um, action. So just to end that, when will we hear again about that grant? September, October, we're, we're figuring. It's about six months from March when we submit it, March 14th. So September, okay. October. And then we'll, we'll already have gone through the budget. We'll already have, you know, our COVID numbers and, and, and uh, you know, what I mean by COVID impact on budget. Sure. And... Yeah. Um, I think we're all hoping that we are all, you know, um, going back to our movie theater. Right. And visiting with family and that vaccines have reached a, a, a point. And, and I think that every uh, parent in this community hopes that by the time we get to September of this year, our kids are in school. We, we've had an opportunity to get uh, vaccines for the, the, our, our loved ones who are elderly and that uh, we've been able to move and navigate ourselves into a position to look towards the future and, and really have those conversations on the positive uh, future this community has ahead of us, because we do. It's going to be the community, though, that's going to define it. I want to go back to the movie theater. Yeah. Seriously. So do I. Let's talk about those. Talk about uh, somebody who wants a movie theater. I say, I'm a movie guy. Right. As everyone knows. Let's talk about the uh, workforce camps outside of the city limits. Why are they there? So uh, this is so I so I, we're in the back half. We got a couple minutes left. I, I gave Nick some 
you know, softball kind of questions. Just questions that people ask me that they don't understand. So the city of Ridgecrest has no bearing on that. That's the Navy. The Navy found land that they were interested in, was able to place it there. That's the Navy's business. That's not our business. Um, we have a role in setting up the, um, we've been able to help, help them with sewer lines and some of the other things that we're able to put in place. But at the end of the day, it's not, um, it wasn't our decision where it was situated. That decision was finally made by the Navy. We were able to generate some revenue off of the land because it's in a convenient spot and connected to a lot of things. But truthfully, it's not in the city because it was the the best tactical move for the Navy. Real quick, uh, with that workforce, in my opinion, do we are we going to see like a huge influx of people soon? I think we. I think we're going to see them. You know, uh, by summertime at, at least. I mean, we're going to see people. We're going to see an uptick in our shopping, an uptick in our retail. You're talking about 10,000 people? Or? No, no. We're talking, you know, maybe 500 year one up to 1,500 by, you know, year two, three. Okay, not a huge jump. No, not, not, not a really. jump. I mean, a jump that's noticeable. Sure. And a jump that, you know, for, you know, hopefully our restaurants, you know, that can get open. And, and let me just throw out a huge thank you again to uh, Melissa and the, the, uh, team that's been working the cdbg um not the cd yeah cdbg um funds for uh, small businesses to get their heaters and outdoor dining equipment i know that's been getting into their hands all over the last past week and that with the purple with the purple tier back in place and the stay at home order lifted uh some of our restaurants are getting their outdoor dining back up um you know please if you are a, a a true if you truly understand how impactful these Decisions have been on some of these small business owners. Go out and have a beer at the flight tap room. Um, pick up dinner at Casa Corona. Um, swing by F and Tacos. Do your little part. Um, I, I, I can't say enough how much those little pieces of business mean the world to those company, those businesses oh, yeah. that have been fighting for a year. And they've got heaters outside. They have, they have new equipment for people to sit. They're doing everything in their power. They're moving indoors and outdoors and outdoors and indoors. Yeah, they, they've had to bounce back and yeah. forth, and it's 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 terrible on them. Um, and and they all got a little bit of help with PPP showing up, you know, the second yeah. round. So um, Ridgecrest now is a great time to get out there, shop local, take care of your local businesses, and especially your local restaurants. Man, have they ever taken a beating? We're talking about somebody that runs a bank, so I think you know if anybody knows. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's not it. I, my, I, I want to be clear, my motivations, you know, are about, I, I've talked to these people so many different ways, and, like, Flight Taproom is a perfect example. They were out there, you know, hustling tables, hustling tables, getting a following of people coming out with, with Ben and having this outdoor dining experience, and then literally, you know, the temperature dropped 20 degrees, it was winter, and everything went haywire. Yep. Um, and I think that haywire was our, our overdue true exposure to COVID. I think we had had, a, you know, our dabbles. But this was where, hey, no, we're going to get some people sick. And, right. and luckily, our, our hospital was prepared. Huge kudos to those the, the people there. Um, they worked their butts off, and they've, been, they've you know, protected lives and handled it. And, uh, and we're making progress on it. All right, quick fire question. When are the council chambers reopening? Uh, February 24th, uh, I gave the order 30 days from the, uh, clo- from the lifting of the stay-at-home order. So um, as of February 24th, uh, council chambers will be available for any necessary um, meetings that need to be called. Citizens are starting to see the ramification of the groundwater replenishment fee. What do you say to those citizens? So those citizens that I know, I've seen the posts about, here's my groundwater bill. It was only up $3.00. Um, Remember to double that because that was half a bill. And I've also had people that have said, my bill went up $300 as a business. Mm. And I said, no, it went up $600. And, you know, they've had a flinch reaction. And I just remind them that this is the uh, IWV groundwater authorities direction. This is something you have every right to speak up on and to pr- present public comment. But at the end of the day, Um, this course of action is what's going to ensure the future of our community because if we don't get Title A water to to support and replenish and we don't get these funds in place now to get to that direction, 
we're going to have a much harder time down the road. Um, I get that it's hard on, on families. I get that adding more to a bill is not what anybody wants. But sure. but I'm telling you, historically, we have not paid a premium uh, for the amount of water that we have used from our valley over the last 60 years. And call it paying the piper. Sure. It, it I don't like it any more than you do, but it's a reality. Right. And... Um, well, this is a huge topic, you know, and honestly, it's we a go huge on and on. topic, and and I and I just that's my point is it's not a city of Ridgecrest issue, so I'm not going to discuss it as you know as such as a mayor, but I just want to, I want the citizens to know we're hearing you. Um, I personally still stand that it was the best course of action for getting a long term solution in place. Right. Get it moving. Get it moving. So if you got questions and comments about that, please let us know. Yeah, um, of course. We'll take note of it, of course, and you know perhaps down the road if we can. Address that absolutely, topic. and what or better is to get somebody in from the groundwater authority, right? So, I'm not a water expert, but um, Councilman Heyman, who is the chair of the groundwater authority, I'm sure he would be more than willing to come in. Awesome, um, and even, even uh, you know, uh, Stan Rotora, who's the uh, IWV water districts rep on the GA, I'm sure he'd be more than willing to speak. You know, we don't want to isolate to just uh, singular opinions, I want to be very clear about that, sure. Um, our goal here is to continuously provide some awareness. So the awareness is, yeah, it started. You are seeing it on your bill. We understand that for some it's it's initially a little shocking. Um, I don't think it's hitting the households as hard as it was predicted. But conservation actions, your own decisions, there's a lot of things here that are variables. Yeah. Awesome. So if my so. wife wasn't doing eight loads of laundry. Hey, yeah. yeah I mean, I'd be. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be suffering quite so bad. But though with a family of a family of six, it feels like that thing's running. That and the dishwasher. I don't think those machines have shut off. And I've gone through at least three in twelve years. You start doing the each. laundry in a bucket. Uh, just uh, I, 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 funny laundry story is you know you know it's the desert. So we we, we and I've got uh, my wife cloth diapers and we've got all the other you know lovely things. You know, I've got a one-year-old baby, and so she's got the cloth diapers out on the rack, hanging out, drying outside like any normal person. And my father uh, came to visit over the weekend, and my wife, in a, in, a, in a fit of fear, runs out there and comes running back in with six brassiers along her arm. And she's like, my bras were hanging out there, and your dad's here. <laughs> now and the whole world went, knows. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's okay. Pretty right. sure it's okay. And, and, and I tell these stories because, I'm I'm just a normal person like anybody else, guys. I got a family life. I, I I got a job I love. I've got a community I love. I've got a family life. We're just doing the best to make the best of it. All of it for for you as citizens. Makes sense. So now you've been mayor for what a full month. Yep. What's the most surprising thing you are experiencing right now? Um. How. People overinterpret words. Okay. Words are words. They are sometimes really well thought out and sometimes very impulsive. Um, for me, um, one of the favorite ones is I write everything. I mean, I write, write, anybody who knows me knows I write prolifically. I mean, I, 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 I just handed in a 316 page board packet. I mean, I write oh. like a madman. And so I write um, what I feel, and I and I refine it to make sure my words are right. And so when I put out something written, it, it's it's those are what I feel. That's that's very honest. But then if I'm talking, I'm talking free. Well, I'm learning there's a fine line between those two. Sure. And the fine line is how people interpret it. And so I just ask if you're confused about my interpretation on something, then you know. 760-977-7090, ebruin at ridgecrestca.gov. Call me, email me, ask me. I'm, I'm not exactly uh, hiding. Um, and, and that's what's tricky is I, um, my words, the misinterpretation of words is one of those things where I went, okay, well, I said exactly what I meant to say. Is there something specific you're trying to get? Right no. There? I just, I, if I said it, I meant it. And I meant it for a reason. And I meant it because it, it, it had validity, um, and I believe the public believes that. Sure. Um, 
and and that's just that's probably the most interesting experience I've had is is um, six sticks and stones can hurt you, words but words should never hurt you. There are six what is it? Sticks and stones break, my break bones. your bones, but yeah. words can never hurt me. Yeah, yeah. So. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of different perspectives, and I'm sure they can yeah, this, take uh, things you know, different. Take 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 a take a deep breath. Um, words are just that. Words aren't words aren't always out to offend or to hurt. Sometimes they're out to provide an opportunity for a new beginning. Sure. So probably most interesting. So so far so good. I'm loving it. Yeah, I I, I mean. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I, I'm proud to be representing this community. I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm uh, excited by, you know, these types of things that are coming together because, guys, this is how we're trying to talk to you. Anybody who says, the city does not communicate in any way, shape, or form, that is an absolutely correct statement. Now, if you say, Mayor Bruin does not communicate in any way, shape, or form, I ask you to point you back to the Facebook page or to anything else that I've been trying to do for the last six months since I decided to be in the public eye. I am trying to communicate as much as humanly possible. Yeah, the whole point is to pull that veil down. and Yeah, it's the whole point is, 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 well, and pulling the veil down pulls down the, um, the automatic assumption that, that uh, there's malicious intent in action. Sure. And I, I do not believe there is, I, I mean, I, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a proudly registered Republican, but I don't believe that people get into public service with an intent to do harm. Makes sense. And, you know, they may, they may be corrupted over time. Right. Money talks. <laughs> Money talks, blank walks. But I don't believe anybody gets into this role of, as public servants without wanting to do good for their community. That's why I commended everyone who came before me. Is they were all good people, all all with the right intentions. And we're at about forty minutes. We went a little long this time, but not bad. Like, comment, share. Yeah, share this. Tell people. Give us some feedback. Um, this will be out on podcast too. Yep. Um, and every two weeks, you want to know what's going on at council? Tune in, throw it in your ear, listen to it while you're driving onto the base. If you're going out into the middle of nowhere, download it on your device. Um, let us be a beacon to bring information into however, co- whatever context you want it. But don't say that the context isn't available. That's what our biggest goal is. Or the medium, I guess. Context is the wrong word. The medium is not available. All right. Because the medium would be podcast versus video versus thing. What if they don't have a smartphone? They don't have a smartphone and you have a computer. You can go to Spotify. Um, the Apple Podcast, the library. Um, if you swing by, I'll throw it on a flash drive. Hey. Um, just because you have a challenge, I'll be happy to give you a Desert Valley's flash drive with it on there. Um, you know, the bottom line is it's 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 all about getting the communication to the public. Awesome. So, well, thanks, Eric. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. We don't know what the next one's going to look like because I'm not going to be here for the next one, I promise, because I'm going to be on vacation. But uh, – uh, we all have somebody else here talking city stuff. I promise you next time. So you won't have to listen to me all the time. So thank you, Nick, Amanda, Paul, on behalf of Desert Valley's live city talk. Everyone have a great evening and tune in tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. for city council. And we look forward to seeing you there. Bye. See ya. <laughs>